I'm Emily Zappia. My group members are Micah Dirks, Ethan Dudden, and Karina Olivetti. Our group chose Interconnected Green Space for our sustainability project. Specifically, we propose that the City of Lincoln develop incentives for landowners to convert vacant urban lots into productive native prairie habitats. The issue is that vacant lots with solely turf or pavement are not productive landscapes. Monoculture turf has low attraction for pollinators and does not provide area for biodiversity. Urban development produces high native species extinction rates and the city of Lincoln lacks inner city nature areas for people to enjoy nature with equal access by all socioeconomic groups. This plan is important for Lincoln's resilience and sustainability because productive landscapes ensure the longevity of a healthy city. Areas like these attract new residents who care about the environment. They promote a healthy lifestyle and provide space for social cohesion. They can also be places for engaging the community in biodiversity protection. Not only do they enhance existing ecosystem services such as pollination, flood control, stewardship, and soil formation, these converted plots will improve soil health and could mitigate extreme storm and participation events. This action could represent a step forward in prioritizing the environment and planning policies and accounts for environmental impact on land use planning. If Lincoln continues with business as usual, these areas will continue to be unproductive. Leaving vacant plants as if turf, turf continues to be mowed, producing air pollution by CO2 from mower engines. They will be areas with low attractiveness to pollinators and biodiversity. Vacant paved lots also will continue to act as a barrier to rainwater and add to the urban heat effect. These spaces may also be developed for commerce, furthering Lincoln's, Lincoln's loss of natural habitat for pollinators, bird populations, and spaces for humans to reflect and observe nature. There are at least four UN sustainability development goals that pertain to our proposal. Goal number three, good health and well-being, since green space promotes a healthy lifestyle and can improve quality of life. Goal number 11, sustainable cities and communities. Target 7 focuses on universal access to safe, inclusive public green space by 2030. Green space provides a community space, works to improve air quality, and decreases urban heat. Goal number 13, climate action. By promoting a sustainable community and strengthening Lincoln's resiliency. And lastly, goal number 15, life on land. Since green space helps protect endangered species and prevent species from going extinct, it in integrates ecosystem and biodiversity values into local planning and creates natural habitats. Our proposal is for the city of Lincoln to convert vacant urban lots into productive native plant species habitats that attract pollinators and biodiversity, sequester carbon, and provide humans with a place to experience nature close by. Our pilot plot proposed is at 8th and Rose Street. This causal diagram illustrates the interconnectedness of our proposal. By presiding over the restoration of native grasslands, humans can help to create a system of positive feedback. Lincoln's population is only growing at about 1% per year, yet the square mileage is growing at a faster rate. The data on Lincoln's annual reports from 1963 to 2018 show that the population growth of Lincoln does not match the urban sprawl associated. Leaving natural areas within city limits is proven to improve pollinator populations, bird populations, human mental health, and builds green space corridor for biodiversity. Facilitating and maintaining connectivity is essential. To help climate change, prairies provide great carbon sequestration. Model simulations show that grasslands store more carbon than forests because they are impacted less by droughts and wildfires. Characteristics of this sustainable practice are that restoring modified habitats promotes native species conservation and reduces the impacts of urbanization on native ecosystems. Natural prairie habitats sequesters more carbon than turf or pavement and access to natural urban space improves mental health. Pollinators such as bees and hoverflies are essential components of an urban ecosystem, supporting and contributing to the biodiversity, functioning, resilience, and visual anemone of green infrastructure. Their urban habitats also deliver health and well-being benefits to society by providing important opportunities for accessing nature near the homes of a growing majority of people living in towns and cities. There have been studies that reflect a positive correlation between higher levels of neighborhood green space and higher levels of mental health. 
Green space allow allows for members of the community to de-stress in the natural environment, which leads to faster rates of recovery from mental fatigue, as well as lower rates of depression, anxiety, stress, and mood disorders. Two alternatives or working examples of productive green space are Chicago's Lurie Garden and Boston's Pollinator Ribbon. Lurie Garden is in the heart of the city's Millennium Park and is an urban model of responsible horticulture. It supports an abundance of local insects, pollinators, and wildlife. 100 plus species of birds make homes at the garden throughout the year. Boston's Pollinator Ribbon is one and a half miles of organically maintained, predominantly native plant species. This intermingled strip of productive landscape helps defragment the city's habitat and increase pollinator populations in wildlife. Once these pollinator gardens are established, they require few inputs and minimal maintenance. Lurie Garden was started by an endowment, and the con with this type of funding is that endowments cannot be predicted. Being reliant on volunteers can be both a pro and a con because of levels of interest and commitment by the volunteers themselves. Volunteer coordinating takes time and may require a full-time paid position. A big pro for this land use conversion is that pollinator and bird populations increase. Pollinators are essential for food production and birds are critical for insect control. Another great pro of the project is that these urban nature areas will attract tourists, which adds to many economic benefits. Our call to action is that there are many of these underutilized spaces in Lincoln. For example, between 9th and 10th on Van Dorn Street and the block between 14th, 15th South and Marion Streets. Landowners could be incentivized or rewarded by for converting their vacant, unproductive spaces into natural habitats to help build Lincoln's resilience towards climate change. To implement this project, we suggest engaging the Lincoln community to determine collective interest in the project. A survey or special event could help gauge possible volunteer programs or a new job se sector specifically designed for converting and maintaining these natural urban areas. Once conversions are approved, initial plant introduction efforts and routine maintenance would be required. Though as discovered with Boston's pollinator ribbon, once these naturalized areas are established, inputs and maintenance are very low. Possible ways for managing these areas are with graze grazing, potentially by rabbits, mice, or deer, or mechanical control through volunteer work. No chemicals will be used in these lots because they are here to protect soil, waterways, and human and organism health. The stakeholders for this proposal are city planners, landowners, neighborhood residents, and for this specific plot at 8th and Rose, the primary stakeholder is Solarion. Getting private landowners to convert their vacant spaces would boost their company's reputation for being allies in sustainability and fighting climate change. The natural systems involved with our proposal are the carbon cycle, since prairie habitats sequester more carbon than turf or pavement, the water cycle through prairie habitats holding water and boosting flood prevention, and the nutrient cycle because nutrients from the prairie plants will enhance local soil. All spheres are involved in this practice. The biosphere through pollinators, birds, humans, and many other organisms. The hydrosphere is utilized through the nature of plants taking in and holding water. The lithosphere is improved by building healthy soil, and the atmosphere is included by the improved air quality that plants bring. Societal factors to be considered are the distribution of these converted lots. Ideally, there would be an equal distribution, distribution throughout all neighborhoods of diverse economies. Do the neighborhoods support the lot conversions, and will these areas have negative impacts like crime or litter? Economic factors include money involved for incentives or subsidies for landowners to convert their empty lots, money involved for either creating new jobs to maintain the land or for volunteer coordinating. There are also costs for initial plant and seed inventory. With these costs, we cannot overlook the many economic positives that green space allows for as well. Money is saved by not mowing, money is saved through flood mitigation, and who can put a price on improved air quality? Urban green space can also increase worker productivity and everyday jobs due to alleviated stress. It is important to demonstrate an appreciable increase with realistic parameters because finding the land and funding for habitat recreation is challenging. Our proposed test site at 8th and Rose is one and a half acres of land, but our plan may not be in the economic interest of the landowner. A city subsidy or incentive would be needed to be implied. 
There are a few possible drawbacks for the project. Regarding the environment, wildlife that is attracted to these areas could be killed or injured by cars. Economically, benefits gleaned from renovating one lot may not outweigh monetary investment in the project. And socially, neighborhood residents may get annoyed by the attracted wildlife. Ethically, we are using the common good approach. The productive green spaces we are recommending will provide something for everything. The common good approach highlights that what is implemented can be shared by and beneficial to all or most members of a given community. Community meaning everything down to the detritus of Lincoln, Nebraska and beyond. Our group environmental, environmental ethic is that as animals, humans are part of a larger inter interconnected system. As such, we must be profoundly aware of how we utilize Earth's resources and look to preserve the system's future functionality. In summary, we've learned a lot from this project, mainly that group work requires time and planning. Project instructions are not always clear and may require time to decipher. Adaptability is key to being successful and all ideas result in expenses. The major takeaway messages are that urban planning should not involve developing every last square mile with turf grass or pavement for commerce. Natural landscapes within city limits are important for the health of a city. And lastly, sustainability requires long-term vision.